thing I'm most excited about that's happening at our school is our real commitment to mindfulness and love. And, and I know that sounds like things that have nothing to do with academics. It drives everything else that's gonna make our students successful, right? The ability to really pay attention to the fact that we make choices in our lives every day. And if we're mindful about those choices, it doesn't matter how many resources we have, we can get what we need from the world to prosper. And then love, right? Because love is what drives even our willingness to do that when it's hard and difficult. This is really the core of our work, and this is what gets me excited to show up every single day. I think for our population, particularly because we have minority students, um, it's really important to, to empower them with the understanding that they can be self-determined. And we've seen just from experience that you know people that go through that reflective process, that's where we see more of the lasting character changes. I was raised in a community in Philadelphia that was concerned about two principal things. One, that you love yourself as a black person when every other image and everything that we were told was that we were worthless, we were criminals, and two, that we had the capacity to be a dangerous thinker, right? Where you made use of every single piece of data and every skill that you ever acquired. Those twin goals and ideas got me my master's in education, got me to NYU Law, I was a law review, I practiced law all over the world, driven by those two guiding principles. I thought the way to do something good for the world is to give every single child who grew up just like me and Damien those two twin driving engines. And if we could do that, that's quite the democracy that I want to participate in for sure. People are becoming aware of what we're doing in the community and we offer so much in terms of you know, having kids really develop their self-esteem, their sense of pride, and being able to teach that from you know, such a young age. TFOA has helped my son in such a way that he's done a 180 degree turnaround. One month he was floundering and the next month he jumped something like two grade levels in his reading and his math comprehension. I'm having students explore uh, what their impact in the world would be. The development of the whole person, and that was what was unique about uh, professional prep. Teaching Firms of America Professional Preparatory Charter School. There are a lot of criticisms of charter schools. Um, some of them are fair and some of them aren't. We address all of them in a way that schools that serve the highest need communities and the highest need children should. Many of the charter schools have a well-earned reputation for figuring a way to get rid of the kids who are distracting from the other kids learning. There are kids with really significant developmental disabilities where a more traditional school setting probably isn't appropriate. But that's a very small percentage of st uh, students. We believe that we can serve anyone. I think that that represents, I think, one of the biggest differences between us and everyone else. If you look at the history of the charter law, it was really designed to serve the most at-risk kids. That's what we signed up for. True reform is uncomfortable, and new models like TFOA um, is a part of the, like, that true reform. In schools, administrators are typically in charge not the people who practice the craft, not the professionals. So in our teaching firm, it's the teachers who make the decisions. Because they're going to make those decisions from the perspective of their core stakeholders, their clients, the students. And when they do that, they're going to be driven by the principal question, what kind of people, what kind of adults, what kind of beings do we want them to become? Do they want to become? Before, I would never say that I would be comfortable sending my son um, to the school that I worked at. I worked in some uh, pretty tough schools um, with students that had very challenging behaviors. Um, and those behaviors do exist within the school, but the way in which we deal with it um, is so holistic and so caring and nurturing. So before coming here, no, I would not have sent my son to the school that I worked at, but I would definitely send him here in a heartbeat. You look at the, the history of schooling in this country, a lot of it began around this idea of the one-room schoolhouse. Where teachers continue to have that support and guidance, but also the freedom to be able to take risks, which we know for you know all professionals, you need that level of autonomy to do your most creative work. We don't call them classrooms, we call them schoolhouses here. The name of my schoolhouse is the Muhammad Ali Schoolhouse. I call it Freedom House. My schoolhouse is Revolution. I'm in Harry McCann. And they had names like Mandela and Keita and Harambe and, you know, Vince Ramos? Vince Ramos Schoolhouse, which means we will overcome. I teach Desmond Tutu Schoolhouse. My schoolhouse is Ubuntu. I teach kindergarten in the Lakesh Schoolhouse. Mahatma Gandhi Schoolhouse. The primary driver of this is teacher autonomy. Each schoolhouse 
you know, the teachers make their autonomous decisions mm -hmm. that are in line and aligned with the principles that the partners set forth. There are two teachers. One is a lead, and it's either an associate or a partner. And then there's a co-teacher apprentice. What makes this unique is that teacher first model, but letting the teacher be a professional. And it's like an honor to that. This is opposed to other places where it's about, here's a script. Instead, we've deliberately chose frameworks that provide a set of thinking skills that will actually free them to be more entrepreneurial. The way that we behave is also integrated with the way that we learn. And so understanding that math is a language that describes how the world looks, and not just two plus two is four. Everybody. Green idea. All right, so let's do it. Most of our body is made up of what? Water. water. Can we take any water that we would find on the planet? With time you are accountable, you're held accountable when you report your assessments, your data. It's, uh, it's your show to a large degree and um, it's empowering. We loop with our students, which means that, you know, we follow them from kindergarten all the way up. They have these leadership goals, these leadership attributes. Banyan trees, so sharing and caring, you want to make sure that you're sharing the crayons. Well, the leadership index is Damien's brainchild. The six leadership attributes. Which are connected to each other. And a lot of comedic uh, wisdom. That represent the attributes that we want to develop in our kids. That was your Sankofa and your cooperation. There's no separation between character development and instruction. You know, you can have a lesson about Sankofa, but it's actually connected to math. It brings the world alive. Now people are making connections to history before we even talk about history. Then the real manifestation of these attributes really occur when they become adults. To go into the world to cultivate not just survival, but real prosperity. Her maquette represents what many call the Sphinx. It's about inquiry, asking questions. Inquiry is the questions that you ask and the way you explore your questions. Is what I'm reading true? Who's the author? What are they thinking about? If you talk about the critical thinking that's really embedded in the common core, right? You saw an ant? Is an ant an insect? Yeah. Okay, Ronald, what did you see? Another attribute is buy -in tree. When you put the seedlings on the ground and it grows up as a tree, the branches, it falls down and becomes roots. Which shows a communal connection. And you know, um, centuries ago in India, it was a gathering place for merchants, so it really represents how we communicate with one another and just how we interact with one another. We address um, everybody as brother or sister. Brother Michael, would you like to share one for us? I walked in and all the kids were like, Habari Ghani, Sister Adia. And I was like, what? Do you know about Habari Ghani? Habari Ghani means, what's the word, in Swahili. Part of our school culture that we call each other brother and sister, they really believe it. We really look for people who are going to represent and reflect the young people in the community that we're serving. I really like the environment and I wanted to be closer to my daughter and her education. And I think one of the neighbors across the street had said to me, you know, bro, you know, Damien, he works at a school. I was like, he does? It's important for us to be here and they're pedagogical reasons. Right. And they're historical reasons. You know, during the Ocean Hill Brownsville strike, the schools that stayed open during that time were the schools in this community because the teachers lived here. I walk to work every morning. We talk about brother and sister, but then when they see you out in the community, it's like, solid, we're brother and sister. The tama is a West African drum, which mimics the voice, so it's like the talking drum. But it also uh, highlights the importance of being proud of who you are. Speak up with great tama. Jed, which represents our ability to concentrate and focus. So we asked our kids to slow down, to pay attention to the mindful step, going from one thing to the next. Connecting to rhythm and movement teaches us how to navigate our lives. Every day, our kids are getting both soccer, formally, and in addition to that, movement. Sankofa, which represents our ability to look back into our past in order to chart our future. So that's a really key concept that we stress to students when we talk to them about their choices. And we want them to engage in those questions and those choices in a way that recognizes their full agency, their full personal power. And that's what we're really focused on, making sure that our students learn and take away. The last symbol, Ma'at, 
that is what unifies and integrates all and Ma'at represents balance um, and how do you make choices that will promote balance in the world. The actual reason we're starting the school is actually to reach the kids who normally would slip through the cracks. We've had students who've come to us who spent time in some of the most traumatic situations and they come here and they just know this is going to be yet another place where people are going to reject them. Instead of meeting that challenge with suspension after suspension after suspension, which just sends the message that we don't want you here, we communicate, there's nothing you can do that will make us stop loving and caring about you. Not only are you not being suspended, but you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. So recognize we're in this for the long haul. Are the teachers in the house? No doubt! No doubt.